Uh, but this next person, um, great storyteller, um, amazing, amazing wit, which you're about to see. It's great. Uh, and they're also uh, named after a Greek letter of the alphabet. And you're like, that's cool. And I'm like, yeah, because I'm an engineering student, so I, I use them. <laughs> and they mean stuff. And you're probably like, well, I, I don't want to use them. I'm like, cool, don't be any engineering then, because you will use them. So can I get Josh Everyman, please? Before I start, I just want to say, uh, Paul John, John Strifle in the back, has told us that we're going a little too slow. So there's a bit in my act, uh, you'll know when it comes, but it's like a certain length. I'm going to make it like this <laughs> length, just to annoy him. So you'll know, you'll know. <laughs> So, I've been eating healthier lately and working out. I mean, you can obviously tell, like, with this level of, like, physical prowess. <laughs> like, how could I not be? In fact, people like to come up to me on the street and tell me that I look like a jaguar. <laughs> and I haven't figured out if it's because of my firm, streamlined physique <laughs> or my tendency to follow them from the shadows and growl. <laughs> <laughs> so I've been trying to eat healthier lately, and to do that, I started doing uh, the keto diet. And for those of you who don't know, the keto diet isn't actually very hard. You just have to like cut out all your sugar, like really temper down your carbs, and then become at peace with the joyless void that your life becomes <laughs> after you do those two things. <laughs> but I mean, it's really not all bad. There are positives, like. Before I started keto, I had never been on any kind of like diet that gave me dietary restrictions when I was eating out. And I used to think people who did, like people with gluten allergies, or just like people without gluten allergies who eat like they have gluten allergies, <laughs> got like some kind of sick, pretentious thrill from just making their order as complex as possible. Like, they wouldn't even order food at first. They'd just be like, Garçon, go solve for Ma's last theorem and get back to me. <laughs> for those of you who don't know, that was a math joke. That's the only one, don't worry. <laughs> so I used to, before I started keto, I used to think that uh, that's why they, like, they all love doing that. Everyone with dietary restrictions love making those complex orders. And then I started keto, and I realized that I was absolutely correct. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> like, I love that whenever I interact with a member of waitstaff, it's not really an interaction, but it's like if I was a TSA agent and they were like a 23-year-old, dirty, smelly hippie from like Amsterdam who just like flew in and he's like holding his bag a little too like protectively. He's like, you don't need to see my bag. <laughs> And I just interrogate them for an hour about like all of the stats of their food. And I love it. I love, and I love it because it makes me feel like a king, you know, whenever I order. Like everyone else who's, who doesn't have like some weird diet or, and isn't pretentious like me. Uh, when they order like, say a burger place, they walk up and they're like, can I get a number five, please? And if they're feeling like above they're like low beggar station. They might ask for like a piece of cheese extra or like a pickle or some shit. <laughs> but me, I walk up and I'm like, I'm gonna give this guy like a multifaceted fetch quest. I'm gonna be like, yes, please, please, come here, come here, come here. Bring me your steak and cheese, throw out the bread, toss out the leafy greens, Fetch the amulet of Dragmar, slay the dragon, and gild my family's crest with the head of the rival king. <laughs> and then I send it back. <laughs> so, based on, on that uh, like bit about myself, you probably realize I'm kind of a sociopath. <laughs> but uh, just to kind of help cement that in your mind. Another thing I love about ordering with keto is a lot of people, like good-hearted people, think that I have a gluten allergy because I'll be like, I'll just have a burger, no bun, and then 
previously mentioned fetch quest and ambulance and dragon and sign. And so they'll be super nice and they'll, they'll be like, oh yeah, can we get you a, can we get you a gluten-free bun? Or, if, or maybe they're like, can we get you a gluten-free turtle? I don't know why everyone at every restaurant has that accent, but if I had to do So can we get you a gluten-free tortilla? Or like, can I get you a gluten-free hat? I don't know. <laughs> Whatever they happen to be serving at the store I'm at, they always offer me a gluten-free version. But I love when they do that because I look in their eyes and I see this like really genuine like desire to help another human being enjoy their meal better. And then I get to just crush it. <laughs> like I can look them right in the eye and be like, no, <laughs> this displeases me. And then I just leave. I just find a new restaurant. They'll never know why. Uh, even on keto, I still love Chipotle. Everyone does. Uh, the burritos I get at Chipotle, uh, so the burritos I get uh, don't have beans or rice or a tortilla, which is like being married, but without like love or respect or a spouse. <laughs> so it's a lie. <laughs> but uh, I recently discovered a pro tip at Chipotle. And that's it, if you ever get a bowl, and you can all use this, I don't have it like trademarked or anything, I should, but I don't now. And uh, when you order a bowl, always get a to-go lid, even if you're not getting it to go. Because the Chipotle uh, employees, they must have a lot going on, because they just kind of toss it in a layer, like, and expect you to eat it like that, like you're an animal. So what you do is you get them to put the cover on, and then you like, you move over to your seat, you sit down, and here's the bit from earlier, and you just... <laughs> this is going to go on for a while, you're welcome to. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that was the last laugh I was going to give them that. Uh, so after you do that, you, uh, you have this thoroughly mixed bowl and no one in that restaurant is going to mess with you. <laughs> because you ha I haven't had sugar in a goddamn month! <laughs> so, you may have noticed, I'm kind of tall. I know. I might have gone over your head, not mine, don't worry. <laughs> so I'm kind of tall, and I'm not very tough though, like, I, and by that I mean I'm really not tough, I'm just tall. Like, if you, any of you could beat me in a fight and all you need is a friend with like a strong back to like sit beside me, like behind me and just be like, <laughs> and I'm just like really oblivious, just like, oh, where's my bow? <laughs> and like, you just come up and like push me and I'm just like, no, nah. and it takes a while because I'm tall for me to fall. <laughs> but it's effective because if I fall from this height, I'll die. <laughs> <laughs> but one kind of person I would never want to like get into an altercation with is like a really short guy who was bullied all of high school. Because that guy has to just be a little ball of primal rage waiting to be in <laughs> Like in seventh grade, to shove him in a locker, it just took like the fat kid to just like gently sneeze on him. <laughs> And he just falls into a locker really slowly. He's like, ah. And he, he weighs like 12 pounds. But like after he's gone through that ringer that was high school as like this 5'4 little guy. He's not even good at sports really at the time. He's just kind of clumsy. Maybe he's nearsighted. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but uh, so after he's gone through that ringer, to put him into a locker like once he's an adult would take like an entire safari of elite huntsmen. <laughs> and even then, it wouldn't even be easy. Like, it'd be like in a movie that he'd kill all but one, and the one would be like, left at the end, and he's like, terrified, but he has like, one gun filled with tranquilizer, and he's like, ah, ah, and he's like, shooting at him, and the short guy's over here, he's like, ah, ah, and he's not going down. He's like 120 pounds, how can he take this much tranquilizer? But he keeps coming, and he's like, ah, ah, and, and the little guy, fire, 
just hits the ground. <laughs> and the hunter just deflates. He's, he's so relieved. He's so relieved. He survived. And, but he's, he's also really sad because all of his friends are dead. <laughs> John's dead. And him and John were more than friends. <laughs> at least it was hinted at. <laughs> and then Devin, yeah, the last hunter's name was Devin, by the way. And then Devin. <laughs> he thinks back to that night eight years ago. Him and John under the stars. <laughs> laughing. They don't, he doesn't even remember why. <laughs> <laughs> he was always laughing when he was with John. <laughs> he heard John say something, but... He couldn't quite make it out. He looks over and John's just looking at him with those eyes that look like a full moon reflected on a still nighttime pool. And John slowly leans in. Anyway, uh, moral of the story, don't mess with short people or people who haven't had sugar in a goddamn month.